Peace and blessings, everybody. <clears throat> Today I want to do is something a little different as we're getting ready to get back on track for our Joel Chapter 2 series. Uh, it reminds me of a series growing up called The Trumpet in Zion. But as we get prepared, I wanted to talk to you about He Will Take You Through the Storm. take you through the storm. And we'll keep this brief today. Years ago, I remember uh, before I came from Mississippi and ended up in this beautiful place of Washington State, I had a dream. Uh, one of the things that I always correlated my life with was having a future playing football. Well, in this dream, I remember I was on the middle of the football field and it was like a kickoff. I grabbed it and I'm right running it back. It's kind of like in the dark night rises. Uh, when Heinz Ward catches the, field, the football and he's running and then all of a sudden he turns around and realizes, oh my God, when he sees the football field behind him. Except for me in this while I'm racing, I look and I see three tornadoes that intertwine into one storm. If you guys heard the testimony before, you know that the story ends with me realizing that God has gifted me with the power over the storm, the power over chaos. Uh, this led me to start looking throughout the years, more recently in the last two and a half, three years, where I began looking and understanding the power of the Lord using, the Lord God using the Elohim, as we understand Mikael or Michael, and the Bible to capture the primordial chaos known as Leviathan that we read about in the book of Job. Well, this is a personal testimony about me conquering my chaos, my storm. Uh, last year, things were interesting. Um, I remember just feeling overwhelmed for the amount of time, the distance that I had to walk to and from work. And I remember, if anybody remembers in Washington State 2020, when it snowed, you had snow columns on the side of the road that were still another two to three feet taller than myself. And I remember one day walking home and I had just gotten into some choice words with somebody I cared about. and. It's just, it was just, I felt overwhelmed. And I remember slipping and falling in the ice and laying there with tears in my eyes, wondering why do I have to go through this just to get so little? You know, I'm walking almost six miles to and from work just for 21 hours of work a week to not struggle to pay bills and be able to handle the basic necessities. This is during COVID. <clears throat> now, mind you, since this point, God has blessed me to go to a number of different places and improve all of that standing deeply. But I remember laying there and starting to pray, feeling that warming restoration of the Spirit of God touching me first here. It started first with the understanding, but at the same time, while the understanding was happening here, I felt it here. I went from within a period of a few weeks after that through that personal revelation and understanding that don't give up. For every level, for every place, there is a next level. But you also always have to be mindful of everything you do in your life that contributes to the moment you face at that time. What manifests right here did not start and begin instantaneously right here. It began back here. Through that accountability, in order to be accountable, you have to be vulnerable. I was then able to start looking in my life and realize, oh, this is this is what I've been doing. Instead of blaming this person, instead of blaming this relationship, instead of blaming this culture, instead of saying this was during the time of George Floyd and this, all these situations were happening. The small, still voice works in other contexts, in other layers as well. So we understand with um, the prophet when there was like, was God coming in the storm? Was God coming in this? Was God coming in that? But it was a simple, still voice, and we understand a consistent narrative. I was able then to look in that consistent narrative in my life, and from that, hear the voice of God. This is where to check on. This is to change. This is what's to come. This is what's to prepare yourself for. So then you are always able to, no matter what the time and season is, be consistent. Because the manifestation of that nature and spirit of God within you is by your consistency no matter what's going on in the world. So from that period of being able to feel that pain, that emotion of what it would feel like to say, God, I want to die. 
God said, no, look, rise, stand and walk. Lazarus 